and then reached out and here we are at the Grammy Museum. So a lot of times I think when you're in something and you're feeling burnt out and I've been there, you literally discredit everything that's like right there in front of you because you just want to get away and take a break. And sometimes you got to do that. Take that break and come back, but then you think about all the work that you've done and the people that you've met, it wasn't by chance. Yeah. So maybe that right there is like your next step onto whatever else you want to do. Uh, sorry, just to add to that real quick, um, go back to the reason of why you started that in the first place like sometimes we get you get to a certain level in your career and like we're all blessed to do what we do but sometimes you forget like what what made me want to do this in the beginning and sometimes you have to take that time to just be grateful and be thankful for like yo and just think about all that you've accomplished and like yeah like dang when i started this X amount of years ago, I would have never, ever, ever thought that I would be here. And sometimes you just got to be connected, reconnect to why you started something in the beginning, to be inspired again, to keep going. And then also figure and maybe find a mentee. Like sometimes like I get inspired to kind of want to go harder by mentoring someone else who looks up to me. I'm like, how do you look up to me? <laughs> like, how do you look up to me? And like, oh, okay, let me let me go harder because I, I want you to succeed and I don't want you to have to go through half of what I went through. So let me be be the person who has to be um, fireproof and share my experiences with you so you don't have to go through that. We have time, oh, wait, after you, we have time for two more questions. Go ahead. Um, you mentioned that, or you asked if we ever felt conflicted about leaving one thing and going to the other. I would say to you to just like allow yourself to be passionate about more than one thing. Like everybody is multifaceted. You can do more than just dance. Like allow yourself to do more than just dance and don't feel bad about not just dancing. Does that make sense? So I and also just tell you to just do it. Like literally that's what I've done my whole career and everything that I left came back and everything that was supposed to go forever stayed away. So like, do it, be passionate about whatever it is they want to be passionate about. Don't feel like you have to just dance or do one thing or have one passion. Okay, Ms. Bryant, you have a question? Yes. Uh, my question is, okay, so like, you guys had this dream, right? And you were fighting to get it and now you're living it. Was, was, is it everything you thought it was going to be? Or was the happiness the journey? It was the long journey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, is like, I don't think, at least for me, like I haven't, haven't accomplished half of what, or let me change that. My benchmark changes. So like every time I accomplish something, like for example, when I was in, when I was in high school, no, when I was in college, I was like, oh, I want to work for AEG. Like, I really want to work for AEG. And then I work for AEG. So I was like, okay, cool. Check. What's the next one? Oh, okay. I want to, I want to, you know, hear recently. Oh, I will, like, this knowledge. Because here's the thing. A lot of people feel like they don't have something to share if they're not a director, or VP, or above. It's like, no, people can connect to you across your whole entire journey. So it's like, okay, I want to make sure that people, that the opportunities that I had, that I didn't have, I want to make sure other people can, you know, connect with people that I have been blessed to know now, um, so that they can be inspired. Okay, cool. What does that look like? Oh, check. So I think for for me, it's a constant evolution of like, okay, cool. I've I've uh, accomplished a certain thing, and now I can now I just need to come up with a, a new list of things that um, that I can create or that I can make happen but I don't think any of us really have that aha like I've arrived like every time I've arrived I'm like okay so now I can do more like what else can I do what else how else can I inspire how else can I make change because I feel like there's so many different things that we can tackle on our time on earth that I'm like okay how can I create the most amount of impact with the with the life that I've been given so I don't think that it's just like a I made it, but I but I'm super grateful across that chance to your question about the journey. It's like, yo, I be amazed in the moment when I'm like when I do some of the stuff that I do. I'm so grateful. So I think it's both, but I don't think you ever just have this. At least for me, I don't ever have this. Oh, I made it. Now I'm good. I'm gonna just sit here. And maybe when I have kids and older, not even then, but like way older. <laughs>
All right, I'm gonna go all the way to the back, um, right here. You. Yes. <laughs> you. <laughs> okay. Now, um, no. Okay. Wait, go, 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 ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm not here with you guys. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, what's the biggest uh, culture shock that you all experienced first coming in the industry? You said coming into the industry? Yeah. Well, I work at TMZ, so yeah, like it, it's my first. No, seriously, because it, like it's crazy. Cause I'm from Delaware. Anybody ever been to Delaware? Yeah. Okay, like two of y'all. <laughs> um, but we live out here, okay? But no, so I come from Delaware. I like intern in New York a lot. I went to college in Delaware, so I was used to like you know like bigger cities and like different rooms and stuff like that. But this is my first job as a, a journalist, so. I mean, outside of what I was doing with myself on YouTube, but it's completely, it's a different world because like the power, I remember working on like when Nipsey Hussle passed away, right? And you would think culture shock is like something that is like, maybe I'm, a, I don't know, a person I don't know or music I'm not used to, but it was a big culture shock for me when I worked on that story and you know, I, I played lead on that story of like reporting what was happening as it was happening. And then literally, seeing the whole world be affected by something that I'm sitting on my bed like I can't even describe it to you but like even to this day I just be like damn like this is like my job is so serious like this is like wow like so it was like a culture shock in a way of like I can't believe that like something that I'm doing is so powerful but then also too it's like you then start to feel this pressure and that was like so new for me because anything else I did was just like I'm just trying to get on right now. Like I'm, I'm doing this interview for YouTube so I can have it to show to somebody to get a job. But now I'm in the job and it's like so impactful and it, it can literally make or break people's lives and different things. So when that happened and I saw the like the reaction of that that story and just everything that happened with him when he passed away, it was just like, whoa! Like you have a serious like obligation. Like you can't be. This is nothing to play with. Like that was like the. I think that was the one and only time that I was like, wow, Lauren. Like. This is real. It was like a huge shock for me. That was the biggest thing for me. Dang, I feel like I just took the energy down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We miss you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say I think this is kind of obvious, but like it's not glamorous. Like that could be shocking for a lot of people. Like it's not gonna be lights and red carpets all the time. Majority of it is not lights and red carpet and. For some people who are looking to get into, into entertainment to say that they know such and so and so and they work with so and so, like, nah, it's more work than play majority of the time. I would say that the, I guess, biggest culture shock was realizing that because we are in the music industry, a lot of it is fake, right? <laughs> and, and, and so coming into that space, just it really depends on what kind of human you are, whether or not you can deal. And, and that in itself tells you a lot about who you are. Um, so the shock is realizing what side of it you want to be on, what you actually believe in, how you portray that to people. And I mean, Noel and I worked on bigger projects for Golden Voice for a while, and it was always really, really interesting having to voice these like huge festival properties to the general public in a way that it captured them, that, that it really resonated mm -hmm. with them for whatever we were doing in a real way, in, in, in that way that it wasn't a front, that we were generally wanting to share with you, hey, this is our good time, but we also wanted to be your good time. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I think what surprised me coming into this and working in the industry is putting the amount of hours um, I thought 8 to 10 was a lot already, and it is way more than 8 to 10 hours a day. Like, I'm um, on set sometimes 15, 8 to 18 hours, and then that's when you really got to question yourself, do I really love what I do? Mm -hmm. Because you're going to be losing sleep, sometimes you're not eating, sometimes you got to miss certain family occasions. 
and certain events that your friends, like their first, I don't know, art exhibit or whatever that you got to sacrifice. So there's just a lot of sacrifice and that's what really shocked me coming into this ministry. Um, yeah. And in addition to that, the fact that like we get to just, that we can do this, like that for me, I think the first time accomplishing something that that I had put in my head was like, no, like wow, like, yeah, like wow, just like dang, like this is happening. We did that. Like, what is happening? We did that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>